Hello everyone, my name is Joe Rodwell. I'm here on behalf of Dorks Music to talk to you about trumpet mutes. Uh, what a fine array of mutes we have in front of us. Um, mutes initially, way, way back, were used obviously just to quiet down the sound of the trumpet. The trumpet is quite a loud instrument, if you hadn't realised. And for certain religious uh, ceremonies or military reasons, a loud noise was what ne not necessarily what they wanted, and they wanted something a bit more sombre and a bit quieter. Um, over the years, that's progressed into having many different varieties of mute. I mean, this is just a small variety of what you can get, but these probably are the main staples of main things you will see um, in the professional and, well, in your playing world. So let's go quickly right to left, whichever way you're looking around at this, can't think of that. We have practice mutes here, straight mutes, Harmon mutes, also known as bubble mutes or ET mutes, some plunger mutes and some cup mutes. So practice mutes are used for, as you would imagine, for practicing. They're not necessarily made for performance, uh, though you can use them for performance, of course. Um, they're just very, very quiet and their main purpose is to quieten the sound as much as possible so you can practice in places where potentially you're not allowed or it's not the best idea to make lots of noise. So the first one I've got here is the Yamaha Silent Brass. This is the best seller at Dorks, uh, it gets sold the most. Um, it's great, it, it's probably the quietest mute I've heard. Um, uh, let's have a little listen to see what it sounds like with it in. Dead quiet, right? I mean, not silent, but you know, close enough for most purposes. I mean, if you're, um, you know, just trying to keep the peace in your household and you're, you know, making sure your neighbors are happy, these are great. And the, the, the best thing about these really is the personal assistant, which you can buy with it or separately, um, allows you to plug the mute into this box and then out with headphones and you get a better idea. It uses a technology called brass resonance modeling, I want to say. Brass resonance modeling. And it makes it sound like a, you know, you're not playing with a mute, it makes it sound like you're playing with a trumpet and allows you to play a bit more comfortably, perhaps. Uh, there's another video on the silent brass mute, so it's worth checking that out. So, the alternative one here I've got is the Bremner Shush mute. Now the Bremner Shush mute is uh, again another practice mute. It's another quiet one. It's not one you can use headphones with as such, but it's more of a plug and play as such. It's a bit louder than the uh, the um, silent brass mute. Um, I actually prefer playing if you're just going with uh, muted without the headphone accessory. Uh, I prefer playing on this one. It's got a little bit more resistance, but obviously it's a little little bit louder. So that's where the compromise is. But um, yeah, it feels a bit nicer to play. I think the tuning. Fighting it slightly, but yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, all mutes will tend to want to sharpen the bottom register of the trumpet, but it's just it's something you have to work with. Um, so that's the Bremner Shush mute. So next, we move on to straight mutes. Uh, straight mutes tend to be used more in the classical realm. Um, I think if you if you ever see a piece of music that just says mute. Usually it means one of these. Um, uh, in even in jazz music, if it just says mute, I would pretend, I would tend to use uh, a straight mute if it didn't specify what type of mute I would use. That um, straight mutes come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and uh, materials. Uh, so this is the Humes and Berg uh, straight mute, and there's a wooden one, and this is the Dennis Wick one, which is metal. Metal. 
and depending on the type of metal as well, um, metal straight mutes tend to project a bit more. They have a bit more zing to them, a bit more metallicness, as you would guess. Um, and potentially better if you want to project the sound, project the muted sound. Um, so potentially orchestral players might want to use this more. Um, this will obviously give you a bit of a softer sound um, and might be better for smaller situations, uh, but chamber music or small band stuff in jazz. So the Dennis Wick is the best-selling uh, straight mute at Dorks. Uh, and Humesenberg are a great company, actually. I use a few of their things. Let's have a listen to this one. finding the tuning a bit interesting, but I mean, I could get used to that. It's the sound of a straight mute, a wooden straight mute. Let's compare that with the Dennis Wick aluminium one. I'm presuming it's aluminium, I said that too soon, but um, tends to be the, uh, you get aluminium and then you get copper, and copper will often give you a bit of a warmer, darker sound, but these are a bit more pingy and projection, projection-y, that's not a word, but you know what I mean, give you more projection. Much more zingy, right? Um, great to play, though. That that feels very nice to play. And um, again, it's just a good alternative. If you are wanting a, a different array of sounds, um, it's a, tr a tricky one. I say this is the best seller, but these might be more useful to you if you're in a, a bigger band, so an orchestra or a, or a big band as such. Um, for practice, I think this is a little bit nicer, for sure. OK, let's move on to the Harmon Mutes. So the best-selling one we have here is the Dennis Wick Harmon Mute. Now, most Harmon Mutes, if not all, have a movable or a movable stem. I say removable, yes, there we go. Um, now, they give you all sorts of different sounds, and there's all sorts of combinations of how far in can give you a different sound. I'll start with it out. Now, this is like the classic Miles Davis sort of sound, if you've got... If you're Miles Davis, I mean, I'll try my best to give some kind of impression of that. Um, it's that warm, buzzy, metallic sound. Let me oh, we'll play. Let's we'll see. <laughs> Little tip here, this is very dependent on microphone placement as well. If I take this out, you'll get more of the metallic zing. And if you go closer to the hole of the mute, You get more of that warmth at the bottom end and just overall. Okay, let's. Uh, I'll go back to the, the putting the stems in after. Let's check that out against the alternative here, the Joe Ral Copper Mute. This is my one. Uh, you can see it's lived a little while. Um, uh, Dorks did kindly kindly send me a new one to try, but I was a little bit scared of dropping it and making a few like these. Most Harmon Mutes end up with a few little dents in. Uh, I think some people do it on purpose when they first get one. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive. I would say it's probably one of the better current uh, Harmon mutes you can get. I'm, I find this one easier to play on I guess is the word. Um, it just has a bit more of a full sound over the spectrum whereas to get a full buzzy sort of sound on this one you have to try a bit harder but the difference is definitely a cost. Um, Joe Rall also do a 
aluminium or silver uh, version of this as well, which is a little bit lower in cost, but also a good sound to it. Now, let me just go back. Let's go back to this Dennis Wick one and I'll show you why you need the stem. So the stem, with the stem, you might want to call it a Wawa mute. It was definitely used, I want to say, by King Oliver, it's kind of the guy who kind of made that a, a thing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So obviously you put your hand over the stem and you get a Wawa effect. For excellent comedy sounds like that. Um, they didn't, do tend to get used quite a bit in jazz stuff, especially in some of the older uh, jazz charts. I think they're, it's a great sound. It's not, not for every piece of music, of course, but uh, it's a wonderful option to have. And the good thing about harmony mutes, you get that different sound uh, with the same mute. Now, if you pull the stem out slightly. It makes it a little bit softer. It's hard to do the wah thing with the mute uh, microphone there as well, but you get the idea. The more you pull it out, the slightly softer it'll get. Okay, um, just because we can, let's hear the Joe Rall copper mute with the stem as well. That was a fun right there. Okay, let's move on to the plunger mute. And you may guess where the uh, the name plunger mute came from. It initially started off on there's all sorts of variations of how this started. Um, you know, people using their hands initially just to make a wah sound. Um, but the toilet plunger became the, 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 the object of choice and then since has been made into its own type of mute. So the, uh, the, the, the best seller we have here is the Ray Parkin, uh, which I can't say I've used before. I'm wondering because there's this extra little hole here, there might be more options for sonic differences. Let's have a little play around with that. Nice, let's just see what that does if I take my fingers off of that. Not too much difference, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't use that too much, but um, but it does, uh, does the job of a plunger. Uh, this is the Humesenberg. This is my one. Um, uh, also a good option to use. Um, it's got different colours that matters to you. Uh, slightly heavier, it might be, I think that might be a bit more flexible in terms of um, how easy it is to use and how to pick it up quickly, but... As my plunge te plunging technique is, uh, needs a bit of work. I haven't done much with these for a while, but um, they both do about the same sort of thing. I think it might be a matter of a uh, colour choice. Okay, and then finally, let's move on to the cup mutes. Uh, this is the Humes and Berg, um, if you hadn't already guessed by their colour scheme. Um, the Humes and Berg cup mute. Uh, this is my one. Um, they are great, and I think. If you wanted a mute that's a bit more for practice as well as performance, if you just want to buy not to have, you don't want to spend money on a practice mute and a mute, uh, I would recommend a cut mute. I think it's my favorite for practicing. Um, that is an opinion, it's not a science. I think some people prefer practicing on harmon mutes as well. But um, let's have a little listen to this one.
That is the sound of a cup mute right there. Um, yeah, it's a lovely sound. I, I quite like the sound of bebop being played on these things. Um, they're often found in uh, big band. I would say cup mute kind of gets played in big band more than any others. I might be wrong. It's between cup mute and a harmon mute, I would say. Uh, and the alternative we have here is the uh, the champion, champion cup mute. Uh, and I'll show you why this is actually quite a useful choice um, as a first mute, potentially. So let's have a quick listen. Yeah, nice, I quite like the sound of that. The difference in sound is, is there. And you know, it might be a personal preference. I quite like the sound of this. Again, because it's metal, it's got a little bit more zing to it than the uh, wooden versions. So potentially, again, good for bigger uh, ensemble work so it can project through a little bit more. Now, the last thing I'll do is show you the little trick on this. And I think not a champion do this. I know there's another, I think potentially the Dennis Wick version has the same thing as well, but you can remove the cup part of the mute and then we have a straight mute. Uh, very handy if you're trying not to spend too much money and you want to, uh, you know, you want to have a couple of mutes for, uh, in the, uh, a couple of mutes for the price of one. Excellent. Let's have a listen to this straight mute. Excluding the frax, I think you get the idea of how it sounds. Um, let's quickly go back because I want to try out the difference between that and the Dennis Swick straight, straight mute. Uh, I think this is it's a bit more of a full sound, obviously, but I think in terms of uh, value, this is going to be good for you. Okay, that is pretty much a rundown of all these mutes. Um, uh, I'm sure if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with Dorks and they will be able to help you. But for now, that's for everything from me and I'll see you soon.